everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on my mat. Um, this is going to be around about 10 15 minutes of actually working towards um, and giving you some tips on headstands. So, Shirasasana A and B. Um, so, we get a few of you have been in touch asking for how to get in headstands, how to practice them, um, what to do. So, here we are. Um, so, to start off, two variations of headstand. The first one, and the one I actually think that is slightly easier, um, is our uh, bound, so our laced fingertips. Um, and this is the one that you usually see that comes first in the Ashtanga series, so kind of shows that it might be a little bit easier. Um, but what we often do first is we often try to come into tripod. Um, so first of all, coming into headstands, a reminder that you are putting weight through your neck um, and really obviously we need to make sure in that sense that, that we are safe. So have a little bit of a self-assessment, make sure that you're where you are, make sure there's no props, blocks behind you, uh, make sure if you are using a wall and of course please use a wall if you'd like to, that you are a good distance away, that you can actually drop your feet onto there, perhaps even your back can go up against the wall. Uh, or your, your bum muscles, um, and yeah, make sure that everything is around. If you actually have someone with you as well, they can definitely spot you, they can definitely help you. So if you have someone with you, perhaps get them to come to a stand, get them to soften through their knees and for them to be side on, so they can hold you probably at your hip crease, and make sure they're softening to their knees. So if someone does fall, you're able to take their weight as well. So definitely use a spotter, definitely use a friend, family member to help you out in these. So like anything, we've got to make sure that we're warm when we come into a headstand. So if possible, this is a great video to do if you have already done a flow, if you've already done some practicing. There's a reason why our inversions are at the end of our practice usually, because we're usually nice and warm um, and we can get, sort of get up into a headstand a little bit more easily. So obviously here the shoulders are really, really important. It's important to warm up the neck. So if you've done that flow, fantastic. If not, we'll just do a little bit of work through our shoulders to start off with. So we're just going to take some shoulder rolls, nice and easy, forwards and back, forwards and back. Moving round through the shoulders and then taking them back. If you want to alternate, you can, or just take them all the way round. Just taking a few rounds of spine, opening up through the chest. Round and, and opening up. Also just coming into a few next step stretches, so if you want to take a few rolls. Round chin to chest. Dropping the ear to the opposite shoulder. Keep coming into your breath in this. Warming up. And again, and perhaps just holding the head to that side. Taking hold of the head, drawing the ear down and then take a little glance down towards the hips so you stretch out through your rotator cuffs. Chin all the way around to chest again, working through the other side. Adding some weight so you stretch out the opposite side of the neck and the rotator cuffs as you look down. Releasing, chin to chest. I'm just going to take a couple down dogs, coming into plank each time, so just working through those shoulders. Also, a reminder here that our headstands come through a lot of whole body work. So it's really important that our core is also turned on and that our legs are really turned on as well. So we're active through our entire body. From there, once you've taken that, just drop down to the knees, just come into a forearm plank, dropping those hips down, flexing through the feet, and just see what it feels like as you do that to really activate through the legs. So start to push through your heels, activate through your thigh muscles, lifting the knees to the back of the thighs. You can take a few little rounds if you want to, again just warming up through the shoulders, drop down onto the knees and come into child's pose. 
Fingertips spreading wide. Then you can move the shoulders if that feels good. And then begin to round up through the spine. So if you need a little bit more, just work through the shoulders. Give them a little bit more of a workout, get them nice and warm. Get your range into the shoulders as well. So when we take our uh, headstand, know that you can uh, take pointed toes, you can flex the toes, just do what feels good. And of course, it is a really active pose in the whole body. So we don't want kind of floppy legs. We want to make sure if we come into the staff pose, Dandasana, that our feet are lovely and elevated. Our thighs are turned on, switched on. And if we were to place our hands down, our belly draws in as well. So that ideally is what we're looking for in our lower body. I'm just going to breathe into that so you get that sensation in Dandasana. And release. Okay, so when you're ready, we're going to start to move towards our Shasasana A, which is with our lace fingertips. So ideally from there, as you lace the hands, you're going to place your hands to opposite elbow to start off with. And this is where we have our alignment. So we want our elbows, our arms here to be shoulder distance apart. So we're going to drop those down from there, just out in front of us at an arm's reach. We're then going to lace our fingertips and we're almost going to create this triangle. As we do that, we're going to place our hairline right down, out in front. But our head isn't going to go right into the hand just a little bit further away. So if we've got that distance, from there we're going to drop down, fingertips, our hairline comes down, and as we do that, we can begin to curl the toes under and roll onto the top, the crown of the head. So elbows drawing in here, and as you can see, I'm walking my toes as close as I can, so my hips lift. Once I've got so much of a lift, you might find that you can just ease one foot off and perhaps the other foot comes off and just get to that point where you feel the hips very gently tip and then both knees might come off or both feet come off sorry knees into chest and just work towards that posture see how that feels keep lifting up and out of the shoulders perhaps from there you might be able to lift through the hips that little bit more Drawing the belly in. And then from there, begin to extend through the legs. Pointing. Flexing. Tucking tailbone under. And then when you're ready, slowly coming down. Again, bending through the knees. Or taking that split. And then dropping yourself into the counter pose, which of course is Balasana, our child's pose. Nice and easy, coming back to the breath. If you want to extend the arms, you're welcome to. So that's our first headstand our lace version and of course it's practice 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 with that one so up against a wall or with someone helping you just take the little knee lifts up the toe lifts up and see how they feel it's a lot to do with uh, flexibility for hips um, and seeing if you've got that range in the hamstrings as well so just be mindful of that with your practice it will it will get better and um, the other headstand that we can do is our shirsasana b which is our tripod so you may have practiced this one a few times. Again, it still goes, make sure that you have space for this one. So there's two ways really that we might be able to get into this. The first one being a tripod coming from Prasarita, which is our wide leg standing fold. So once we've taken our wide leg, we might drop down. And here really what we're trying to create is this equilateral triangle right out in front of us. So our head, hand and hand creates this perfect triangle so our points are perfectly balanced out. You may feel that if your hands are wider that 
feel more sturdy, but actually the closer you can come in and the elbows draw in, the stronger your point will be and the equal weight between your head, your neck, and your arms will be as well. So from there, from Prasarita, nice wide leg stance, draw those elbows in, place the head down into that third part. You might need to take the legs a little bit wider, and then you might find, with the fingertips pressing down, that the legs just begin to rise. And lower down. So you can practice that one a few times, just lifting up, perhaps drawing the legs all the way round, drawing them back through, working with what feels good. And the second way of getting into our tripod is really almost from a bakasana or a malasana, which is more like a low crouching position. So you might come to this position here. Again, plant the hands nice and wide, fingertips wide, elbows drawing in, and then again, placing the head from there into this triangle. So crown of the head is being placed, or hairline, then rolling onto the crown. And then from there, you can walk your knees onto the backs of the elbows. And again, you might just take some toe taps, Pressing down. From there you might begin to draw your knees together and slowly begin to rise and come up. Again, drawing down. Perhaps again placing knees onto the backs. Releasing and dropping down into your child's pose again. Forehead to the mat. Coming back into your breath, stretching the arms. So make sure that you take the counter poses, child's pose with each one. Try the different variations. And I suppose really with any headstand, um, you can do lots of postures to help you to, like I said, get more flexible in the different um, joints in the body. Um, but really, um, it's about practicing those inversions. And it's often, yes, it's physical. So um, it's about your practice and how you feel in it in that day, how your strength feels. If you've often done a lot on the arms, a lot of stuff in the triceps, you might not have that strength to go up on that day. But it's certainly also um, a mental thing as well. So there might be a fear of falling. Um, you might just kind of not be in the right headspace to go upside down on that day. So really respect that as well. Always know what feels good in your practice. Uh, be mindful as, as always as to how you feel on that day. Um, and yeah, give it a go. So good luck with everything. Enjoy the headstands. If you have any further questions, um, fire them to me. If you have any other requests for different postures, muscle groups, lens, durations of practices, let me know. Thank you very much. See you all soon.